Hi, everyone. Welcome to Analyze Your Trade, episode number 37 for June 5th, 2018. Just a few days, about 50 people submitted up to five symbols each. And I've put the list together of the most frequently requested ones, which you should be seeing on your screen right now. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of Timing.com. And I developed this show with Dean Jenkins of Follow Me Trades. Uh, he is going to be here to moderate tonight, but uh, he is finishing up another presentation. Let's go ahead and get started with the introductions. Uh, a little bit about yourself and your work. I'm sorry, David, did you ask me? Or? Yeah. OK, there's an echo. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, thanks again for having me here, David. And, um, yeah, I'm Larry Gaines, and I'm the uh, founder and CEO or leader of PowerCycleTrading.com. So I've been trading for you know over 30 years, um, and was previously uh, ran a really large oil trading group uh, for over 10 years. Uh, so my background is trading oil commodities, you know, just a lot of different things. But uh, what we do now at PowerCycle Trading, my whole thing is the directional trading based on our trading model. And then using options for those trades for you know better leverage and risk control. So I like you know trading directional trading and then using options for all those trades. So uh, a lot of fun to be here. I love looking at the various different uh, trade setups. So we've got a lot of good ones to look at here today. So thanks again for having me. And Jim, how about sure. you? Sure, uh, I'm Jim Kenny. I provide the content uh, for the Option Professor uh, DVDs. Uh, Option Professor has been educating uh, investors for better than 20 years now, and uh, basically goes over everything from the basics, intermediate, and advanced strategies, and goes over uh, the uses and the risks of every strategy. Some strategies might be used for uh, income and cash flow purposes, uh, and others may be used for uh, hedging, uh, meaning to offset risk on another position. And uh, other strategies are simply limited risk speculation. And so there isn't a lot to learn. And uh, through the uh, DVDs, people come away with a lot of information they can use down the road. Oh, okay, thank you. And uh, let's see, looks like Dean's logging again now. So uh, Dean, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm good. Okay, great. We were just doing introductions. So if go ahead and do yours and, and then we can start with the list. Okay. Hey, I'm Dean Jenkins, founder of followmetrades.com, and uh, good to be here. Thanks for having me back to moderate, uh, David. Am I on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're on. Sounds okay. good. So, so we, got, yeah, uh, we got Jim and Larry, right? That's. Uh, yeah. Hey, Jane. Hey, guys. I didn't catch the intro, so uh, good. Well, hey, we got an interesting list today. Um, there's some new symbols on there that I haven't seen before, so I'm excited to go through them to uh, uh, take a look at them, to offer my opinion, and to hear your guys' opinions. And with a smaller panel, just the three of us, I think we should get through these pretty quick and get you know get as many as possible. So let's jump right into it. First symbol up is LEAD, lead or lead or whatever it is, and um, We'll go in alphabetical order. And so, Jim, you're up. Okay. Well, I'm not 100% ex uh, familiar with this uh, uh, ETF, but it looks like it's involved in uh, dividend leaders and things like that. So it has been doing pretty good. Uh, I think it's probably going to uh, mirror a lot of what the S&P and the major broad indexes do. So if we can get those going higher, uh, this thing looks like it probably would participate. Uh, technically, it's got a inverted uh, 50 and 200 day with the $32 price on the 50 day average and a 31.35 on the 200 day. So they've crossed to the upside. That's a good thing. And it's trading at 33.16. So it's trading above the averages as well. All that looks very good. It looks like it's got a really good support just above 30. And uh, the only uh, thing that would be a little concerning is the volume seems to be a little dry. 50-day uh, volume is only 7,200 shares a day, and the 200-day volume is 12,000, 13,000. So uh, this uh, recent advance has not been uh, tremendously uh, uh, embraced with volume. But uh, technically, it looks pretty good. And if you're a believer the broad indexers are going higher, then this would be something that would make sense. All right. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I, 
just reading the name, I think I, I'm with you. It seems like it's some kind of dividend play ETF thingy. Uh, Larry, what do you think of this uh, thingy? Yeah, this thingy lead looks fine. I mean, you know, just not knowing much about it, but technically that looks good. Uh, you know, it's back. I like to look at the FIB levels. Once we get above that 618 hold, that looks good to open up the gate or door for the next, you know, major area, which would be right here to 3350, but, you know, potentially back up to that prior high. And uh, so, so it looks good. I mean, we've had a, you can see it consolidated held here. So it's taking the next push up. So, um, you know, if, if you jump into this one, uh, I think you could look for 33, like I said, 50, and then potentially up there. Or if you get a pullback into this kind of 3250 level, pretty decent support there and um, could potentially look for an entry down around that level. But overall, you know, it looks, looks fine. All right. I agree with everything that's been said. The, the technical setup, the pattern here looks good. Um, looks very similar to the S&P 500. And I would not touch it for the, the the volume thing that Jim pointed out, right? Way too thin. You can get stuck in this thing and not get out of it. And that would not be a good situation. So I would not trade it ever at those volume levels. All right. Next up, this one's got some volume. I know, IBB. Yeah, I was looking at, uh, am I up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at uh, Amgen and uh, and Biogen just earlier today, and they've had pretty good uh, bounces here. And now the question is, uh, can they uh, break through this resistance here and keep going? Um, the uh, good news is they've gotten above the 50-day and the 200-day average on IBB. 50-day uh, average 105 and a half, and the 200 days at 108. So that's good news. Uh, the bad news is those two numbers are still inverted, which means if this thing started dropping under 108, 105, it could go right back into the soup. And if it breaks under 100, you know, it could even accelerate to the downside. So I think this is a real critical zone, this 110 area here. If it can break above 110, uh, you know, I think you've got something that could uh, have some real good legs to it. Uh, but I'd be uh, somewhat careful around 110 simply because uh, of the fact that there is some resistance I see technically, uh, some former lows from the fourth quarter of 2017. Uh, that could be some uh, resistance here. And then, of course, uh, like I say, the inversion of the 200 and the 50-day uh, average is kind of telling us that this is a bounce off of a trend that had rolled over. And so I don't know if I'd get the party hats out until I saw it really uh, close above 110, and, and, uh, and maybe at that point I might take a bite. Okay. What do you think, Larry? Uh, I agree because uh, the, what I'm seeing here, you can see from my charts, if you're you're looking at it, you're here again is that 618 retracement. So coming from that swing high we had back in March to the low, um, we're right into that 618. So for me, I want to see it get through that 618. That's a very, very key technical Fibonacci level. And if it can get above that and then hold, have that become support, then it's got a chance to push back up to that prior swing high right there at 115. But until it does that, I would just hold and wait and, um, and you know, let that establish itself over that key uh, resistance point, which is a currently still resistance. And, um, you know, but good support right here at the 200 day, you can see all that price action. So kind of sandwiched in here, 10, let's call it 108 to 110, but I just let it either break out and get it back above that 110 or see if it fails. So right in here, do nothing. Okay. Nothing. Um, and sometimes that's the absolute best trade, no trade, right? At least on a particular instrument. Um, you know, I'm looking at this on my daily chart. You guys can see my screen. I got a couple years worth of data up. Um, not my favorite. Um, it, it's very volatile. You know, it, there's, I, I look for orderly stocks. You know, I think you get a better, you know, this is the kind of thing you could be right about the trend and still get stopped out um, just based on, you know, its average true range. And so I don't really care for instruments that move like that. So I look for things that move a little more gracefully, a little more orderly. So I'm not interested in this. There's no trade for me on uh, IBB. Uh, Home Depot, they should be screaming up just based on what I'm spending there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, Home Depot obviously was a fantastic buy when we were talking about it when it went down to its 200-day moving average, which at the time was around 171. And obviously, it held that 200-day average and has bounced up all the way up here, you know, above 190 and everything. So um, it it does look good. Uh, the inverted 50-day uh, and 200-day are certainly nothing negative there. Uh, as far as right this second here, you know, again, this is probably going to do well if the indexes break out to the upside. So that would be one thing to consider. And if they're not going to break out to the upside, uh, there's some real estate between 192 and 176 where the 200 day is there. And if it filled in that real estate between those two prices, it would be more interesting to me. Um, if this, um, if the broad base indexes were to roll over to the downside, uh, this, I think, would participate in that decline. Yeah, it, it sure did in uh, January, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So like I say, uh, this is, uh, you know, obviously a very large cap company. And it's obviously one of the big ones that's held by most of the stock funds. And so if uh, they're dumping stocks in a stock fund, this would be one of them. They do it. And they probably have some pretty handsome gains overall in the last few years. So this would be something they could scale back on as well. But right now, technically, this thing is uh, in good shape. Um, the only thing I would throw a little water on is the fact that it's, uh, you know, 15, 20 bucks above its 200 day average. And Unless we're going to take out 2780 uh, and, and 2800 on the S&P, uh, this may have a hard time going uh, substantially higher. All right. Can't wait to hear your thing, Larry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, okay. Yeah. I think it looks real good here. I mean, you know, this is for a trade. I'm not looking for a long term, you know, m you know, huge trend up, but this is what we call a volatility squeeze. You can see this tight pattern of consolidation. And then when we get that consolidation phase here, you know, we're looking for it to either break up or down. And so like to look at momentum for the direction of a potential break. You can see down here, these indicators that are above zero, those are momentum based indicators. They look good. Here's a, you know, a four hour time frame. Uh, so it looks, you know, it looks at, like it has good potential. You've got 618 here at 193, call it 194. So, you know, this would be worth taking a shot at it. And if it can get through that one, this 618, it's got good potential back to the upside. But that's a pretty decent looking technical pattern there. Yeah, I agree. I, I got a pretty clear Elliott Wave 5, um, which is the highest probability. You know, we had this big impulsive move starting in 16 all the way through uh, last year to the beginning of this year. Perfect correction, the continuation of the original trend, really clear evidence that's beginning with <clears throat> higher highs, higher lows. Uh, I got a momentum indicator as well. It's Paul positive. So a, a, a target on this for this continuation of the original trend up here, 224 to 258. It's a, and, and we just took out this last previous high and this last move last week. So, you know, higher high higher low new highs so it's all go from a technical standpoint um the thing that would keep me out i think jim mentioned this thing's super highly correlated to the s p 500 and so this would be a great trade if you are bought into the indexes continuing up if you think there's some risk there you know this is probably going wherever it goes and so i'm a little hesitant to you know I've got a couple that are correlated to the SP 500, but if every one of your trades is, then you've really only got one trade on. And, and that's a little bit dangerous from an overall portfolio management standpoint. So I, I like the setup, like the technicals, I'm not taking the trade. But if, you know, if anybody's not exposed in that way, it, it may be good. And if you, if you are bullish on the indexes. Okay, so next up is, uh, ETE, Energy Transfer Equity LP. I know these LPs sometimes have funky tax treatments. I know there's some extra paperwork for some people if you're trading these things. But, uh, um, yeah. yeah, Jim. Uh, well, it's a uh, pipeline transportation, and uh, it's been pretty much uh, back and forth between about 14 bucks and, uh, you know, 18 to 20 bucks. And uh, right now it's been back on the upswing. Um, the... Uh, the technicals are a little dodgy here uh, because of the uh, 50 day and the 200 day are inverted, uh, 1580 on the 50 and 1672 on the 200 day. But the stock is trading above both numbers at 1761. Volume is a little bit skinny lately at the 50 day average at around 4 million shares versus 5 million on a 200 day. 
Uh, obviously, people are buying this thing for the yield, probably not unlike they buy um, that Aleron company, um, M, I mean, AMLP, something like that. So, um, you know, these things, um, uh, they go up and down on their own, uh, not just on oil prices alone. Uh, and right now it's on the upswing. So people buying this, they're buying it for the 6.93% yield. Um, and they're just hoping that their principal doesn't fall under 14 and start going in the toilet. But, uh, you know, right now it's just fairly stable, right in the middle of the range that it's been at for the last few years, which is around 18 and 14, you know, 18 and ni uh, 14 and 19. So it's right smack in the middle. You're going to get uh, the dividend that they or the yield that they're giving out. And then your uh, the P ratio at 18 is not over the top. But uh, like I say, these things do go uh, on their own drummers. So buy it, hold it, take the yield. I would say, I mean, right now, like I say, if, if you're in it, you'd hold it and uh, you'd certainly love that yield. And then you'd obviously probably use 14 as a get out of town uh, card. Yeah. So that's kind of the ideal stock though. To, um, if you're, if you're a yield player, buy it for the yield and sit there and write covered calls against it too. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know what the premiums would be on this thing. Cause it doesn't seem to go very far, but you could look into it anyway. And, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't sound like a big move, but you take uh, 1761, and if you went down to 14, uh, you know, you would be looking at uh, about a drop of uh, 20%. So 20% minus 6.93% yield is certainly not the kind of math you want to get involved in. Yeah. Yeah. So Larry, you're a technical trader, I know, probably not a dividend guy. So I don't know. What do you, what's your. Yeah. Um, well, one thing just from the, the technical standpoint, you know, it looks it looks pretty decent, um, but you know, since it is a dividend based type of play, I don't like to chase. You know, the dividend type stocks are fantastic, but I'd rather be buying those on lows than on you know highs. But you know, this it looks good, but uh, you know, you're going to start getting some resistance at 18, and then up here. So I mean, it, this not you know, it's not one that you would strictly trade on technicals alone, right? So not one I'd probably do anything on right here, but you know, for dividend play, these are fantastic type of stocks to look for to get into. Uh, but I like to get into those on a pullback to support and then see it turn. So that's just just the way like MLPs or any of those that um, you know I've been involved with. I'd prefer to get those on like what we call you know value plays where you buy them on a like a cycle low here. You can see where it's turning. So, you know, if you're following these types of dividend type stocks, the MLPs or whatever it might be, you know, if you can get in on these turns, that's that's the best place. Now, if you're in this, that's fantastic. Just stick with it and just let it grind all the way, you know, as far as it wants to go. But um, to jump in a dividend stock now, you know, those are long term plays. I probably would avoid it jumping into it right here. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. And I just drew a couple boundary lines of where this thing's gone for you know, two years, and it looks like more like a flow dynamic study in a pipeline than a stock chart, right? So, um, yeah, there's nothing there for a technical trader, swing trader like me, uh, not interested. Uh, but it's fun to bring it up. Uh, ICHR, never heard of it. This would be fun. This could be the next jewel right here. Yeah, this is uh, semiconductors, and uh, you know this thing's had a pullback down towards 20, and it banged on 20 a number of times here in 2018 so far, and it's held. Uh, it's now trading at 26.23, which is above the 50-day average and right on the number on the 200-day average. Uh, those averages are inverted a bit, uh, 24 and 26 are the two numbers. Uh, one thing that sticks out is short interest at 25.64% of the stock. So there must be a significant amount of hedging or shorting against the box or negative people on this because 25.64 is a very high short interest number, which means if it does get cooking, there's a lot of people who may want to cover their shorts and that could create some, uh, some short-term volatility. Uh, the volume on it is pretty flat, about the same on the 50-day and the 200-day. P ratio is at 12 and a half. So this thing seems like it's coiling. I'd like to see uh, what the other technical indicators you guys are showing. It seems to me if it got above 30, uh, it could fly for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, you know, I said as we were bringing it up, maybe this is the next jewel. Um, what do you think, Larry? Jewel in the rough here? Um. Mm. I would need to see it break, start breaking above this 
you know, just this trend line I put in. Uh, I just think there's better things out there. I mean, it's just, you can see how whippy it's been. Very, very whip. That's a weekly, but still, this price action is very, very whippy up and down. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, doesn't get me too excited. As far as, um, you know, I don't see a kind of volatility squeeze kind of setup that I look for. Um, but if this was to get above this area here, 27, 28, then, you know, it could be a different story. But I think there are better things out there, personally. So, yeah, anyway. one thing one thing I just wanted to throw in there is that there's a lot of popularity on the smaller cap stocks right now. Uh, witness the Russell Index. And this thing has only got about 671 million as a market cap. So it might also catch a tailwind uh, if the uh, popularity of the smaller caps continue uh, continue going. The one thing, though, yeah, that you pointed out earlier, though, the big short interest, I love that. So if you've got, you know, 20, 25 percent short interest and this thing does start to break out, you know, yeah. then you get all the shorts being squeezed. So that that's yeah. the thing that, that those can be real juicy. But I, I would wait for it to break out right here. It's just kind of stuck churning around that 200 day moving average. Yep. Yeah, I'm not. I'm with you. I'm, um, whippy is the perfect term for this. You know, I like stocks that move. But I like it when they move with some, you know, some order and predictability. And this thing, um, not so much, right? You don't, you can't really see any time or price uh, uh, repetition. It just moves at random, and there's not really a big trend going on right now. Yeah. So the short, the short ratio thing is is super interesting, and you know, typically we wait a minute. But I'm going to show another trade that I'm in right now. Open my kimono a little bit. This is a uh, Kimco Realty. We're we're long Kimco. And so what we see is, you know, big impulsive move down, channeled, breaking to the upside. Now looks like a correction underway. And uh, another super thing that's uh, thing that's super interesting about this is again, it's uh, it's short uh, ratio. So uh, short ratio is five to one. That's pretty big, right? The percent of float isn't that big, but the amount of share short versus the average daily volume is huge. And so we could get a short squeeze, a short covering rally that would take us up to our target here at 19, even if nothing fundamentally about the company changes. Once it starts, the shorts start covering pretty fast, and that can really drive it uh, pretty well. So that's that's one. That's a freebie that I like right there, uh, Kim, Kim Core Realty. Uh, back on track, APC. Yeah, this uh, company has been very popular on TV. I've heard a number of people liking it. And, of course, why wouldn't they? It just went from 50 to 70 this year. Uh, the question is, is where is it going to go from here? Oil looks like it's definitely taking a bit of a break here. And uh, this stock hit a resistance where the highs of 2017 January area, right around 70, were just hit. And now we're coming off. I think uh, this is a, a stock that uh, you know has some potential of um, – of coming off because of the fact that it is about 21% above its 200 day average. And I've been noticing uh, even great companies, Boeing, et cetera, uh, where you get uh, 20, 30% above its 200 day average, just something occurs and they have uh, some kind of a pullback. Uh, and uh, I've just seen it. I saw it happen to a lot of companies. So this one's a good company as far as they're making money and it's going up, but uh, it's had a good run from below 50 all the way up to 70. Oil uh, has made a turn a bit down. There are an oil extraction business. And um, they, um, you know, they've had a good run, and uh, it wouldn't uh, surprise me if it pulls back to sixty-five. Okay, yeah, you're, thank you, Jim. Um, Larry, yeah, I'm um, pretty much full agreement. You know, we've had oil pulling back. Oil's make, made its really big peak, and uh, kind of pulling back right now. Uh, and you can see here, just um, these are reversals and momentum shifting down. So I, I see this you know, could easily pull back down into this zone here where you see all that price action. So, you know, down to 65, 65 to 66 level, I would not, I would not be looking to buy it right here. You can see it's just hanging right on those moving averages. And uh, if you push me one way or the other, I, I would probably take a short for a move down to, you know, not a big, huge move down to 66. So um, you can just see on the lower time frame. here's five minute today. It came off. We put it back to four hour. You can see we're starting to get some negative momentum here. So, you know, 
if you're looking to buy buy the stock, I would just wait for it to pull back into this zone here to see if it stabilizes. Otherwise, do nothing or, you know, um, potentially could take a short for a little bit of a move down. It's interesting. Um, you know, Larry, I think you trade shorter shorter hold times than I do. I'm in trades four to six weeks. Yeah, um, I short. I mean, you know, I'm in for two, three days or a week, you know, very short duration uh, kind of swings. So on that, on that, you know, uh, from 69 to 66, probably an okay profit target for you, right? For me, that I, I think it's going to find support, like you said, right around 66, 65. Yeah. That would, that would not be a big enough target for me for a, a longer term hold like Yeah, like but see when you use options, if you do an option spread, that's still pretty good return, you know, using weeklies. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. APC. Next up, Jazz. Yeah, this one's uh, definitely been on the bicycle uh, as far as its price movement. Late uh, 2016, so in the last 18 months, you've gone from 100 to 175 about. So that's a that's a pretty healthy run, huh? Uh, and uh, they, uh, you know, they're making money, and the P's at 23, which in this kind of an industry is probably not that on uh, not too high. Um, looks great, except uh, if you had to put a little, you know, uh, water on the fire here. Uh, it is pretty far away from its 200-day average. The 200-day uh, average down at 146. We're at 172. So in terms of percentages, that's going to equal um, about 15%. Nothing off the chart, you know, nothing off the chart, not uh, way over the top. But if it did have a pullback because it got some bad news or the pharmaceutical uh, thing got some uh, relatively bad news, if you could get in there between the 160 and 145 area, you know, that would probably be a better, or actually 160, 150 area, that would probably be a better entry point unless this thing is just going to fly through 175 and start printing 200, which right. anything could happen in biotech, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> anything can happen. Um, and that's why the IBB is kind of a tough one, right? Because some are doing great, some are doing badly, and it's, you know, kind of the, the mean, right? And it's hard to, hard to, I think you're better off individual plays than IBB for sure right now. Um, Larry, yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's had a great move. You know, you're hitting all of its profit targets here. So here's just that prior, you know, I mean, this has been a fantastic move up and, and, and you can see, you know, so extended from this 200 day moving average. So when you look here from this prior, that last swing high to low right here, you can see that nice kind of a churning wedge, you know, kind of a bull flag here. It broke out of that flag and we just hit the next profit zone, that 1618 extension. Uh, so usually, you know, you hit that, just let it let it cool off, see if it comes back down into this area here. I would not be chasing this to the upside. Yeah, that's where I'm at. It's I just did a quick, you know, uh, uh, Fibonacci, LA wave analysis. We had three, perfect four, we're in five. It's in the target zone, kind of late. And a tough one to trade. Tough one to trade. Even in the uptrend, the higher, high, higher low swings are pretty extreme. And take yeah, out big what's swings. like support levels, you know. So little, little whippy to use your technical term, right? Even in the uptrend, you could you could be stopped out, and that's that's super frustrating to be right and lose money. Um, so we're about halfway through the list. Let's go ahead and um, I showed one trade that I like, but uh, we we'll go around the, the panel here and. Uh, See what you like, Jim. What what's on your radar right now for a trade? Well, you know, there's one that I uh, was in before, and then basically I uh, I think it might have some value now, and that's uh, uh, Freeport McMoran. And uh, you know, the metals uh, have not done very well, but uh, they did come down and test some support. That uh, gold going down towards twelve seventy five, I thought was pretty important. And so, if it can uh, get on its bicycle a little bit this summer. Um, this Freeport Mac brand has the 200 day and the 50 day moving average, uh, right? Just a little bit underneath where it's trading. So, uh, you could keep it on a short leash. There's a gap right around 18, 19 area. Uh, so going up towards 19 could happen if we got moving a bit and, uh, yeah, the 200 day and the 50 day are coming in at around 1694 and 1652. So they've crossed to the upside and they're not too far from the current price of 1765. And uh, the dollar, 
Uh, it would not surprise me if it would have a little problems looking forward because it had a nice little rally here. But uh, my target on the uh, euro was 115, which it hit. And there are some who believe that uh, you know we could see uh, another roll over in the dollar. Uh, we've got a big uh, budget thing with the government uh, in September. And so uh, people may start thinking that uh, there could be a little chaos uh, between Trump and Congress on uh, on budgets and all that kind of stuff. And that could cause volatility on the dollar. And that might be helpful to this thing. So it's got a lot of support at 15. And it's got moving averages, uh, 1650 and change. And uh, it has been trying to go a little bit higher. So uh, I was just thinking there could be some value there. Interesting. And I'm with you on the dollar. Yeah, I'm showing my chart on the UUP, the US dollar ETF. <clears throat> um, I it, it actually is in a corrective move up. This big move up we had this year is you know a correction to the massive move down last year, and it's kind of done. It looks like it could start down and, and follow that original trend down. And uh, so I'm with you on. Uh, I think that run in the dollar could be over. Uh, Larry, what do you what do you like? Well, uh, this is. Uh, this is We've had, We've had um, uh, this week, this week, everything, everything you know, last week was last week set up. You can see a lot of things, you know, after that non-farm payroll, we had a lot of, a lot of the tech stocks last week made their move. So a lot of them have already made the big move. So it's kind of hard to jump into them now. But one of them that's kind of interesting is, is Apple right here. So you can see Apple, if you look at the uh, daily time frame, and you look over here to this time frame on the far right, that's a four hour, which is, it was very, very coiled, right? And then it broke out, you know, last Friday, continued to to the upside yesterday. But the thing that's interesting about Apple is that you've got this kind of target up here about 197, 198. And that's also about, I think, where it becomes that trillion dollar company, right? So uh, markets have a funny thing about pushing to various big targets. So that could be the big target. Then you'd probably get it to, you know, the prop, profit taking coming in and selling. But one way to play this, one way that we were playing it is to set up a, a wide butterfly. So did like a 195, 200, 205 butterfly for next week's expiration. And if we get a push up in here to, you know, 197 in that area, you can just take profit on the butterfly. You could convert it to a, ratio butterfly a lot of different ways you could play it but that was kind of a lower risk trade to kind of based on the the potential for this to kind of maybe push towards that first trillion dollar company all right that's pretty interesting absolutely first trillion dollar company um so i like i showed uh kimco and i like that but another one we're in that's pretty interesting is uh uh CGC canopy, canopy growth, the cannabis stock just moved from the uh, uh, over the counter to uh, New York Stock Exchange, carried the history with it. And this is a wave five. So we had a big impulsive move, nice correction. And of course, Canada is getting ready to come online. And, uh, you know, they've already approved the legalization and it's going to be available next month. But we got a target up here, uh, Fibonacci extension zone up. 35 to 38 to 50 and it looks really highly probable. So we're in this one and in some profit and there's still still time to get in. It trades at nice volume and it's got a really, really nice technical pattern. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with this one and uh, liking it so far. All right. Thanks guys for sharing what you're interested in. Good stuff. And now we're back to the list and back to you guys. Um we had a question on the survey too that um, I don't think we've talked about on either show for a while. So if you um, have any comments on this, basically the question was uh, which which broker is best. So if you guys could talk a little bit about what broker or trading platform that uh, you've you've oh. used or w which one you like the best or or what you use now, that sort of thing. Oh, that'd be fun to talk about for a minute. Um, I'll go, I'll go first on this one. Uh, I, my personal opinion, I think uh, Thinkorswim and and TradeStation are the top two, at least for U.S. based traders. I know TradeStation is not available globally, but I think they're the top two in terms of combined brokerage and trading platforms. Um, I like TradeStation because I know it and I've been using it for a long time, and so I'm really familiar. But TOS seems to have really really good capabilities, and for veterans, 
if you're a veteran, um, it's a no brainer to go to trade station because you get uh, no platform fees and no commissions free. Uh, that's a, free is a pretty good price and it's, and it's high quality. So that's my, my take on it. What do you, what do you, Jim, what do you like? I think, uh, frankly, you guys are probably in a better position to, uh, you know, give opinions on this particular area because I, I don't have experience with a large number of the different firms where I think you guys do. So I'd just, uh, you know, take a step back and let you guys give the information. Okay. Yeah, the uh, ditto uh, Thinkorswim and TradeStation, um, both really nice platforms. Uh, TradeStation has great commission rates, et cetera. Uh, I love the Thinkorswim platform. I love their options uh, platform, but TradeStation's excellent as well. So those two, yeah, also. I know a lot of people use Interactive Broker as their broker, but that, that means you know, you're doing analysis somewhere else. And I like to keep it all under one roof, you know, placement trades right off the charts. And stuff. Now, the other thing too is Thinkorswim is a free platform. So you can open an account with TD Ameritrade online, it takes 15, 20 minutes max. And um, they're going to automatically approve you. They just want, you know, to get you in. And then you can download or upload the Thinkorswim platform, which you're, you're seeing here with my charts uh, immediately. And, uh, you don't really even have to fund it. They just want you to you know, open an account and then you can have access to their platform and go from there. 60 days. You got to fund an account or they cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, a, it's an excellent platform. Yeah. I, cause I downloaded it and played with it and I, I really like TOS, particularly with option. I was doing some option strategy, you know, looking at some new strategies and, and they got to play back, play forward. Mm -hmm. play, trades and play, it, play it forward in time. And that's pretty cool. It's end of day data. It's not intraday, but it's still really helpful. And uh, trade station does not have that, you know, playback capability. They have back testing, but you gotta go write code to do it. Um, so yeah, we're kind of like we're in agreement on the top two there. All right. Uh, you know, the other, the other platform I hear a lot about is uh, the same guy who developed TOS and sold it to TD Ameritrade. He's written a new platform called, I think it's Tastyworks. Yeah, that's correct. It's supposed to be good. People are talking about that as being a pretty easy to use, pretty uh, good system. But I, I don't know if they're a brokerage or not, or if you gotta do something. Oh else. yeah, they are. Oh, okay, interesting. All right, back to our list. Another uh, bio, Celgene. What do you think? Yeah, Celgene, Cel Cel uh, yeah, Celgene obviously fell off a cliff here. And uh, the question is, is do you want to, uh, has it stopped? Has the rain stopped at 75? It may or may not have. Uh, that 74.13 was the low on May 21. That's uh, less than a month ago. So not a, exactly time-tested low there. But it is very oversold because the 200-day uh, uh, average is up at 105. And we're down in the 75 area, let's say. So you're talking about uh, a significant drop in the uh, uh, in the distance between the two. So it is uh, it is very oversold, and there's gaps above anywhere between 130, 110. I don't know if it'll ever have the strength to get up there. Obviously, they had uh, some problems with uh, one of their drugs or something. Because I'm not an expert on uh, this stock, but I can see that they've obviously had some very bad news in the last uh, uh, eight months, taking it from 150 down to 75, half price. Half price sounds pretty good if this is a company that's got anything cooking. $57 billion company on a market cap. So we're not talking about Johnny Lunchbucket here. Good size company, $57 billion. And uh, they are, according to what I'm reading, still uh, making a profit. So unless these numbers are wrong, um, you know, uh, they're still making some money on something. But uh, And the volume during the decline in the last 50 days has not been that tremendous. About 7 million shares a day, the 200-day volume is around the same. So it has not been a huge, heavy sell-off that way. I don't know if that's good or bad. But, um, you know, obviously some people like to see a big, heavy volume, which means everybody's given up, and that means the market makers have just dropped the bid and let everybody sell all their stock, and now that everyone's sold all their stock, then it bounces back. You don't have that here because the volume has not been that uh, egregiously high. So um, this is, uh, you know, sticking your head into a buzzsaw and just drawing, uh, you know, lines in the sand. Right now your line's got to be the low of 74. It's trading around 77, 78, and, uh, you know, you're just – Obviously, trying to buy a company here at half price because you think longer term it might have something going. Uh, the bounce back should have some resistance at 100 if it does get a bounce back at all. Okay. 
Interesting on this one, the short ratio is non-existent, essentially. No, 1.64. There's nobody shorter. Yeah. So um, that's not a good thing either. <laughs> no. It's just, it's just been a slow, steady burn, you know? Yeah. Uh, Larry, sell Celgene? Celgene. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you know, right, I would just do nothing. You can yeah. see, you know, it's had this – huge move down obviously and here's a monthly time frame so is it going to break lower i mean it could break down and go back down to this area and here's 70 but you're pretty close to it um i would do nothing i would wait and uh, see if this thing stabilizes and i wouldn't do anything until it starts pushing back above this like this is a 21 period moving average i'd wait for these moving averages to start turning up and crossing so here's an eight exponential if that can turn and start crossing that 21, then I probably think, hey, that probably looks good to get in. But right here, I would do nothing. I mean, if you want to try to short it, you know, you might be able to get it a real quick timing short on momentum down to retest that 74. But, you know, it could just as easily retrace back up here into these moving averages. If it could break that 21, then it has a good, could get a good pop up to 85. So, I mean, I think there are better things out there, but I would do probably nothing on this one. Yeah, I'm with you. I think trying to short it right now, it, you know, the momentum is running out of this downtrend and, yeah. and the, the potential profit versus the potential reward on shortening this thing right now doesn't, doesn't add up for me. Yeah. Um, um, and I would not go long either. The trend has not, like you said, the averages haven't turned up. The momentum hasn't turned up. It's just flattening. So I wouldn't touch it at this point at all. Um, all right. Uh, next. <laughs> Lots of political commentary we make on Disney, huh? But let's stick to the chart. <laughs> so, uh, Disney, what do you think there? Uh, uh, give me one second here. I'm trying to. Okay, yeah, it's, it seems like it's always right around 100, doesn't it? You know, plus or minus five, seven bucks off 100, back and forth, back and forth. Um, you know, the company obviously uh, had uh, uh, some disappointments out there right now, from what I hear with this solo and. Uh, I don't know if they're involved in that, but um, I, they, I guess they were involved in the Roseanne show. Uh, but I don't see a lot of action off of all that, really. You know, so it just uh, seems like it's uh, uh, trying to hold its lows at 98, and uh, it does look like a company that, uh, you know, ESPN uh, with the gambling. Some people are thinking that uh, with the passage of gambling, it's going to be very helpful to ESPN because everyone's going to be hooked at watching the games because they got money on it. Um, that's the theory, anyway. Uh, and, uh, so as far as the technicals are concerned, uh, let me just see here real quick. Uh, so here's a question. Does legalizing gambling mean it's going to increase? <laughs> Cause it's been going well, on. Well, I mean, uh, what they're saying is the viewership, uh, and the, um, and the revenues, uh, to, um, to ESPN may pick up <laughs> because everyone is watching the TV intently, um, in, uh, Des Moines because they now are gambling on the games. That's uh, the theory. Whether that theory is going to pan out or not is uh, unknown. But uh, that was one of the things. And then, of course, uh, people are complaining that some of their uh, current uh, properties are not making the money that they used to be. I'm just trying to see where the um, averages are right here. And here they go. Yeah, they're all right around 100. You got 101 or so on the 50, 103. Uh, this thing is languishing uh, right here. And so I think it's probably going to be a feast or famine kind of deal if they come out with something big that's very very good you know then it could uh, it could take off uh, especially if it starts getting above 103 and then starts turning these averages up and i think there's a merger with or some kind of a deal with fox going on right so if something breaks on that that could be the juice one way or the other to get this thing uh you know 15 or 20 bucks off the number that it's on right now all right larry we got here on uh, the happiest place on earth. Uh, I love Disneyland, but um, I don't see any anything I would be doing here. It's just this is I remember one of the other times I was in here several weeks back. Maybe this is we looked at Disney. It's just see how whippy that is. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a very consistent price moving stock. Even when it goes up, it's just whippy. So um, you know, it's below all the moving averages. It just it's just not technically something that looks good. 
you know, I, I agree with you completely. Um, when I'm when I'm doing uh, my training and I'm teaching people, you know, my trading approach and analyzing charts and stuff, this is actually my current poster child for a chart. You pull up a chart looks like this. Get it off your screen as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah. Go go find something tradable. This one is terrible. You know, I love Disneyland, but the chart is just, you know, this is where you know trading accounts go to die. Right. Yep. All right. Here's one I haven't heard of. Is this the shoe Rock? deal? No, Rock? yeah, this is the shoe. Yeah, this is the shoes. Yeah. I thought that. Was the yeah. comeback. Yeah. I heard. I heard. And foot, uh, hey, footwear's on fire. You know, you have us. Um, Foot Locker uh, that went crazy in price there about a month or so ago. And so, uh, you know, this thing is uh, up, up, and away. It's uh, gone from about 6 bucks to 18 bucks. And so it's, if you're in there, you got to enjoy this ride. You know, consumer's working. Consumer's got money. Consumer wants new shoes, apparently. And so uh, these companies uh, are making money. Uh, or at least people think they are going to be making money. And uh, the only thing that's a little bit concerning is obviously uh, the technicals are, uh, we're at 200 uh, day moving average are around 1270. Uh, you're up at 18. So that's looking like almost 50% above its 200 day. So getting in now uh, would be a little bit nervous because you're getting in in a little bit of an overbought condition. So this thing does look great if you're in there and then there's no, uh, you know, like I say, there's no uh, topping formation or anything. It's uh, very much accelerating, but it is uh, very extended from its 200 day average. So me personally, I would just applaud the people that bought it and uh, keep my money on the side waiting for something on this thing. Uh, short interest is 9.2%, which is not off the charts, but it's pretty good. And of course, some of those people must be, uh, you know, probably uh, covering themselves right now. So this company is uh, looking great and it's got in a good sector where footwear is doing well. Uh, but uh, the only negative would be is that it is a bit overbought basis, the 200 day average. All right. What do you think, Larry? Crocs. Yeah. Um, you know, it's had a fantastic move. I, I would not be chasing it in here. You can see the really the sweet spot's been hit. You can see when it kind of turned again, here's that that magical 618, see right in there, see the high to low and see that 618, see how it came down, held it a few days and then it started to accelerate. Uh, so that that was the really good spot right in here, but up here you're into these extensions on the Fibonacci levels. I would just be, um, you know, take some profits, have a trailing stop for a profit stop. And uh, if you're in it, fantastic. If not, uh, find something else. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I wouldn't wouldn't uh, chase it. That that last pullback looked compelling. It was down to about fifteen bucks. That that could have been good, but wouldn't chase it here. You know, it's funny. Crocs. Uh, back when I first joined Facebook and they started doing groups. You know, there was a, a Facebook group called um, "I Don't Care How Comfortable They Are." Your Crocs make you look like a dork. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Um, plus, Mar they, plus I, Mario Batali wears them. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, a confession. I do wear them. I, I've got an old pair I've had for years, and they're just they're just comfortable. But they do look like clown shoes. Uh, <laughs> I just remember watching. I remember watching the chew and big uh, big Mario Batali used to show everybody his uh, Crocs. You know, <laughs> hope hopefully those who own it now have better luck than he's been having lately. Yeah, I, I do hear they are comfortable and a comeback and then jim said footwear is on fire um so interesting yeah nice trend uh, i would not chase it it's too late there's no there's no i want to move on um next up here we have waiting for symbol at i don't recognize this symbol this is uh etna i'm glad i met you remember so on this guy here, we have got a market that went way up, similar to all the financials, right? And then it came back down right after the January blow off to the upside. And now it's been kind of consolidating here. So the overbought condition is now behind us in the financials. That's not a problem any longer. 
what is the problem is, is uh, what is this yield curve going to do and how much uh, borrowing is going to be done by the consumer and a bunch of other things and how much competition the small banks are going to give the big banks. And then, of course, if they do that, then they could water down some of their earnings as well. So there's a few different dynamics going on in the financials. And that's why people are looking at things like Goldman Sachs going, what the heck's it doing down 50 bucks off its high? You know, well, I think there are some winds of change out there that people are trying to figure out. And that's why the financials are, um, well, they took all the, the juice out of it as far as the overbought condition. And now the question is, is where are we going to turn? Uh, if you think the financials are going to go uh, because you you think, uh, you know, obviously their profits and the environment's going to be great for them, then uh, this thing is probably a, a buy in here because the 200 day average is at about 172. And uh, the lows this year, you know, are not that far from here. So, um, you know, if you could uh, get this thing on its bicycle a little bit more uh, and you're bullish on the financials, uh, this is the neighborhood to be in it. If you think that the financials have seen their day and everybody who bought into them thinking it was money market are finding out that it's not money market. And uh, I mean, what, it was one of the most popular things, the financials, right? The banks, the banks, the banks. So, you know, it's a very crowded space, even with the pullback. Um, but if you're a believer in it, this is the neighborhood to get in. And if you um, want to short it, you might want to break uh, see a break under 170 before you do that. Okay. Larry. Okay, so if you look at the financials, you know, they're struggling here. So here's just the XLF, you know, and we've had it's pulled down, broke through the 200 day, bounced back up, sitting right there on top of 200 day again. So, you know, not looking too, too good. Uh, I was looking at Goldman Sachs earlier as well. If you look at that, just kind of backing into all this stuff, you can see, I mean, that just looks terrible. I mean, it's just down below all the moving averages on the lows. So not getting any support there. So if we come back over, then we look at AET. Um, to me, it doesn't uh, definitely. It's not something I'd want to go long here. And uh, I can see it here. This is a four-hour time frame. This is what we call, uh, you know, look at that consolidation. How tight and coiled that is. I can see this potentially breaking down from here. If we start getting a separation to a close, let's say tomorrow or the next day, and it starts breaking below. On a closing basis below this, you know, like 174.50, I could see this back down to this 200 day moving average real fast. So, you know, this could be a short trade setup for a pretty quick move back down to, to this area and then see if it bounces. But I would definitely not be buying it here and uh, could potentially, like I said, just for kind of a momentum swing trade one or two days down to this area might take a look at that for a short. All right. I think I'm with you. I like that. Uh you know, I think you said 174. I'm in there. Once it breaks the, the HMOCO cloud, it'd be better if it broke the 200, which is at 172. We could get a pretty good correction coming. I've actually been looking for shorts in the financial sector, and I found uh, we're, we're short Barclays, and that uh, that's that's working out pretty good. Um, but there's probably uh, a handful of good short candidates, and AET might be getting close uh, as well. All right. Next uh, up. In guys, we... We had a request from the live audience I'd like to get to before the end here. Uh, oh, okay. WSM. Let's check it out. Okay. I got it up. I'll go ahead if the other folks are pulling it up on their chart. So WSM, Williams Sonoma, no idea what they do. Uh, today's volume is nearly $3 million, so it probably has decent liquidity. Again, I have no idea what sector this company is in. They had a huge impulsive move down from $90 down to uh, under 45. So they lost half their value. So the question is, what would a retracement look like? Of course, the last uh, week or so, they've been racing up and uh, they're in the correction zone already. So, you know, the place to, to play this for me would have been as it broke the cloud here at about 52 up at 60, uh, too late. Not and, and by the way, your stop. You know, the logical support level would be 50, you know, 50 and some change under this low right here at 60. That's a that's a pretty big uh, distance from the stop. The reward is it's got a very small reward to risk ratio. So nice pop breaking out of the channel, but um, uh, no trade there for me too late. What do you think, Jim? Yeah, if you're, uh, this is a high end retailer of home goods um, and uh, like Tiffany 
or any other high-end stuff. Uh, people have money uh, out there, and uh, they're spending it at the higher-end places. Williams Sonoma is the place you would go for higher-end stuff. And uh, obviously, very lately, there's been a big run in the stock, so I don't know if there's news on it as far as uh, a buyout or some type of activity with the stock, but uh, obviously going from under 50 to up 60 almost uh, today. Uh, something's going on news wise. They don't just go up like that for no reason. Um, the thing here is, and one of the reasons uh, contributing is the short interest. Uh, you're at 23.56% short interest. So that's a pretty high number on short interest. And of course, that would get people uh, going. The dividend yield is 284. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, still is a, a good dividend. So you got people looking at a lot of money, a lot of people spending at these stores on the higher end stuff. You got short interest covering a bit probably, and then you've got maybe some other news hitting the stock and that's what gets the engine to go like this. If you're in this thing, I would definitely let it ride. And if you're not in it, uh, you might hope to see if you get a bit of a pullback and uh, try to verify that the news it might be trading off of um, is actually verifiable. But uh, this does look good and, and it is with the theme of the higher end stuff. Okay. What do you got here, Larry, on uh, William Sonoma? Yeah, if you just look at it real quick, it definitely looks like some kind of news-driven event here. Um, but if you look here, this is a weekly time frame. You've got this blue line. That's a 200-week moving average. Usually, you never want to you know, uh, buy at a major 200-period moving average the first time up. So here's the first time up in a long time to the 200-week. You can see the last time it was up here, it tried – one time failed two three four failed and then start selling off so definitely not a place where i would ever buy first time up into a 200 period moving average and that's a weekly and then you've got a huge amount of clusters of um of fibonacci uh you know levels right here so if you take that swing high back here Back in August to the swing low, you take that swing high to low, you've got this just major alignment or cluster of a confluence of uh, Fibonacci resistance. So a lot of resistance right here. All right. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't sound like anybody's um, teeing up an order on uh, Williams at this moment on the panel here. But interesting. I'm glad we could field that on the fly. Um, hey, we only got a couple minutes left. So let's go around and just uh, make any closing comments. And if there's a web page or link or something you want to share, this would be a good time to do that. So, sure. uh, Jim. Yep. Well, I want to thank everybody for having me here, David, especially. And uh, again, I try to uh, encourage people if they want to learn more about options and all the different strategies that are available to them and how uh, they may best uh, fit into your game plans, either as a hedging device, a speculative device, or a uh, cash flow creating device. Uh, these uh, these DVDs that we have are quite helpful. So uh, if you want to shoot an email over to optionprofessor at gmail.com, we'll try to give you a hand with that. Other than that, uh, appreciate being here with you guys today, and I think we covered a lot. So uh, thanks a lot again. All right. Thanks for being here, Jim. And Larry, uh, closing thoughts and any... any yeah, well, thanks again, Dean and uh, David. And yeah, so come check us out, powercycletrading.com. I'll actually be doing a a free webinar this Saturday. So you just go to my website, powercycletrading.com. You'll see this it says click here for Larry's upcoming events. Click on that. And uh, if you'd like to register for a free webinar, it'll be all about options. So I've been talking a bit about direction, but then when you combine options with your directional trading, it's going to really open up a new way for you to see the world as far as trading. So uh, check us out, sign up for the free webinar and uh, hope to uh, see a lot of you there. Thanks again for having me. All right. Hey, thanks, Larry. It's always good to be here with you as well. And again, I'm Dean Jenkins, founder of followmetrades.com. There's my website, and you can check it out. Um, I believe in complete transparency, so I've got my trade multi-year trading record posted here. It's audited by a third party. The results are real in my brokerage account, all the trade details. And a great way to get to, uh, you know, foot in the water, find out more, and, and join me is to sign up for my free newsletter, Weekly Market Analysis called Beyond the Noise. All right, so that is it. Hey, fun being here with you guys again. And David, thanks as always for pulling it together and uh, back to you to wrap it up. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, great uh, great show. And uh, for everyone watching, be sure to hit the uh, YouTube subscribe button if you haven't yet. Also, I am working on getting the timing research shows um, published as podcasts on all the major podcast networks now. So I've up until now, I've only been 
uh, publishing the shows on YouTube and uh, putting up them up on the Time Research website. But I have um, I have the shows set up now on Podbean and Stitcher, and I'm working on getting uh, them set up on iTunes and uh, a bunch of the other major uh, networks. So if you listen to podcasts, um, those will be um, audio only, of course. But uh, if you if you can't watch the show live or can't don't have time to watch the video, you can at least listen to the uh, audio in the car or or wherever else you uh, listen to podcasts. So uh, be sure to watch for that. Uh, there will be announcements on the website and news uh, newsletters and that sort of thing. Also, be sure to join us for both shows next week. Uh, Crowd Forecast News will be Monday, uh, June 11th at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time and Analyze Your Trade. The next episode of this show will be June 12th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And I uh, just want to thank all my guests again for this week. Larry Gaines of PowerCycleTrading.com, Jim Kenny of OptionProfessor.com, Dean Jenkins of FollowMeTrades.com. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks. Thanks, David. Thank you, David.